Hello friends, let us learn a new topic today that is dislocation of shoulder joint. It's really very important uh, for the exam point of view and also for our, uh, it's more com one of the most common disorders, uh, dislocation of the shoulder joint. So this dislocation of the shoulder joint is, if you see, this is the humerus and this is the scapula, it's from behind. Okay, so I'm just reversing it so that it's from the front, humerus, and then scapula, and then this is the clavicle. It will be something like this, okay? If it's from the front, the person is standing from the front, okay? So first, here, when is this dislocation of the shoulder common? So dislocation of the shoulder is mainly due, uh, due to the uh, injury. So the injury, if it's, uh, if the person falls on the outstretched hand, abducted and outstretched hand. So in this way, the injury is here and has a result, the head of the humerus, which is here that may raise up. Okay. Or it can be anterior dislocation or posterior dislocation. Whenever the person falls on the outstretched hand, this is the most common type of, uh, mechanism of, uh, uh, trauma. Now, well, if you see the uh, in posterior dislocation, how does the person cause posterior dislocation? How how does uh, an injury cause posterior dislocation? It can be whenever a person standing like this, and I give a blow like this. So if if a blow or if a force acts on this direction, then the uh, joint which is there that can uh, dislocate, and the head can dislocate posteriorly. So basically, uh, the uh, dislocations can be divided into three types. Number one, anterior dislocation, where the head is anterior early. Posterior dislocation, where it is posterior, where the head is posterior. Inferior dislocation, where the head is uh, at a level lower than the glenoid process, glenoid labrum. So let me, glenoid labrum, okay? Let me just show you different types of dislocation. So this is the normal um, scapula and normal humerus. This is the normal joint. So in anterior dislocation, the head of the humerus comes anteriorly. So it's like this. Okay, this is anterior dislocation. Then posterior dislocation, the head of the humerus which is there, this goes out posteriorly. So this is posterior dislocation. So the head lies posteriorly. And in inferior dislocation, the head which is here, that lies inferior, a little in a lower level. So these are the three different types of dislocation which we see in the shoulder joint. These are the major types. And then now the anterior dislocation which is there, that is again divided into three types. So types of anterior dislocation. What are the types of anterior dislocation? One is if this is the... Uh, just I will just explain it here with the with with the bones and then I'll explain with the diagram. So this is the normal shoulder joint. This is the anterior dislocation, right? If this anterior dislocation, uh, if this is uh, below the preglenoid, just in just below the glenoid process or in front of the glenoid process, then that is preglenoid. If it is if the anteriorly dislocated head of the humerus is in front of the glenoid process, glenoid labrum. That is preglenoid. So this is preglenoid. If this is in front of the coracoid process, so this is the coracoid process. If it is just below the coracoid process, then that is subcoracoid. So this is the coracoid process. This is the humerus head. If this head is below the coracoid process, then that is subcoracoid. Now they will also have the um, clavicle, which is here. If this is just below the clavicle, see. The head is just below the clavicle, then that is subclavicular. So mainly we have three different types of anterior dislocation. This is normal joint. This is anterior dislocation. If it is in front of the glenoid labrum, then that is preglenoid. This is the preglenoid. And if the head is below the coracoid, coracoid process, then that is subcoracoid. If it is below the clavicle, then that is subclavicular. So these are the three major types of uh, uh, anterior dislocation which are present so if you see in this diagram 
so this is in front of the glenoid process so this is pre glenoid this is in front of the coracoid process so this is uh, sub, below the coracoid process so this is sub coracoid and this is below the clavicle so this is sub clavicular so these are the different types of anterior dislocation okay now what are the pathological lesions which are there in the anterior dislocation of the shoulder pathological lesions so one the most important and the major pathological lesion which is there is bankart lesion okay so what is this bankart lesion so in this diagram this is the bankart lesion so what is bankart lesion bankart lesion is this is the glenoid cavity if you see and this is the glenoid labrum this is the antero inferior part of the this is the inferior part this is the superior part this is the anterior part posterior part inferior part superior part anterior part posterior part so in the antero inferior part here the glenoid labrum which is there this will be smooth there is a smooth surface over it that is glenoid labrum a membranous surface whenever there is stripping of the glenoid labrum along with the periosteum that is the outer layer of the bone and this glenoid labrum whenever there is stripping of it in the inferior surface anterior inferior surface so that is called as bankart lesion so if you see here the the layer which is there here is lost and here in the anterior inferior part you will see the lesion so this is bankart lesion okay sometimes this bankart lesion becomes so severe that there may be stripping of a part of bone so this whenever there is stripping or avulsion if you see the avulsion this part of bone has been separated from the normal glenoid fossa glenoid labrum so this is called as bony bankart lesion okay bony bankart lesion so how do you see this bony bankart lesion in x ray i would like to just show you prior so that you will you will remember it well okay if you see this is the x ray i think you can all uh, all of you can visualize the x ray finding x ray clearly so this is the humerus head of the humerus this one and this is the scapula this is the clavicle so if you see here a little you know this uh, i know it's not so clear but i'm just getting it closer see this if you just see this is the normal scapula here there is a part of avulsion see this one okay so this part which is avulsed so this part which is avulsed is bony bankart lesion and here you have bankart lesion okay i know this is not so clear but i try to make my own uh, i try to make it clear okay so this is the x ray for bony bankart lesion the second type of lesion which can be seen pathological lesion which can be seen is hill sacks lesion so what is hill sacks lesion hill sacks lesion is this is the head of the humerus right this is the anterior part this is the posterior part okay this is the lateral part okay this is posterior lateral part of the head of hum uh, head of the humerus right in this posterior lateral part there will be depression normally there is a dep there, this is the head of humerus so here there will be a depression okay development of that depression why is this why is there a depression like this this is because if you see this is the glenoid labrum which is there because of this dislocation this labrum will impinge and cause uh, injury to this head of humerus resulting in a small depression in the humeral head okay which looks like this if this is the humeral head it should be round but here there is a depression so that is hill sacks lesion if you see this under x ray i think this is quite clear this is the humerus this is the clavicle this is the scapula okay so here this one which you see here this part okay this is the hill sacks lesion if you see the depression which is there in the head that is hill sacks lesion so these are the pathological changes which you see in the shoulder joint how do you diagnose it and how are you going to treat it everything i will deal it in my next class so thank you guys for watching my lecture and thank you